Welcome to Spreadsheet Geek. In this video, we're going to take a look at a fairly common problem with older databases and accounting systems. That problem is that the address has been set up as a large field of free text. Modern databases often force you to enter the state, the city, the street address, and so forth in specific formats in different fields. But in the older systems, often that is not the case, and you may have many different people entering those addresses in many different formats and so forth. Let's look at a way of extracting a postal code from such a database. This video was made using Microsoft Excel 2019. We'll do a simple example first and then a little more complicated example. This is what I'm talking about. This is a sales report. It's a list of invoices from July 2015. These are fictional customers and fictional addresses, but some elements in the address are accurate. If you look closely at this report, you'll notice that in some cases, uh, there's extra spacing, there's capitalization of the city and street in some and not others. Some have a, a unit number, some don't, and some uh, phone numbers are formatted like this, while others have the prefix in parents. So there's obviously a case here where lots of different people have entered the addresses in different ways. So what we want to do in these examples is separate the postal code or the zip code since these are United States addresses. The reason we want to do that is so that we can come over here and use the map function to plot our sales on a 3D map or, or a 2D map. The mapping task is a topic for another video I'm going to do, but right now we just want to pull out this postal code. Now I told you we would do a simple example and then we would do a more difficult example. This is the simple one. And if you look closely at these addresses, you'll notice they're all in Colorado. Notice the capital CO. And you may not be aware of this, but for any state in the United States, all zip codes begin with the same digit. So in Colorado, it's the digit eight. So this is kind of what you want to key in on. What do I have in common with all these addresses? And the thing that you have in common is a space CO in capitals, space, and then an eight. That is the only element that is common to all of these addresses. And that's what we're going to use to pluck out that zip code we need for our map. So my basic plan of attack is going to be to chop off everything left of the five digit zip code. That's going to be my first task. And to do that, I'm going to need to know the length of each text string. So we'll use this length function or LEN, which is a very simple one. You just pick a cell and it gives you the length of the characters in that cell, including spaces. So let's autofill that down. The next thing I want to do is find the position within that 93, in this case, character text string where the C in Colorado state abbreviation is located. So I'm going to call that CO. And let, you know what, let's call it CO8 dot 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 position. And we'll borrow that format again. Now to, to do this, you're going to want to use the search function. 
The search function is kind of nice because you can search for wildcards. And the text we want to find, we want to be as specific as we can. We know we're going to look for, and you have to put this in quotes, CO space 8. But just in case I catch something I don't want to catch, I'm going to put four wildcards in there for the remaining four digits of the zip code and close that off in quotes. And then you just have to tell it within what text. And it's F2 again. So that 57 is telling me that this C is the 57th character over from the left. Let's paste that all the way down. The next step in this process is going to be to get rid of everything left of the digit 8 in the zip code. So if we're getting rid of what's on the left, we're keeping what's on the right. That means I use the right function. And my text is right here. And now how many characters is going to be a math problem? And we've got the two things we need to solve that math problem. It's going to be this cell, 93, minus 57. Now think about this. If I just leave it like that, I'm going to keep the O and the space, as well as the zip code and everything to the right. So I actually want to take out two more characters for the O in the space. And let's see how that works out. Perfect. We've got a text string that begins with the zip code. Let's autofill that down. I'm going to make a little more room here. We don't need to see all of this. And let's go ahead and copy those cells and paste as values to get rid of that formula. The remaining step should be pretty obvious. We just want the left five characters of this cell. So that's an easy left function. We'll look at this text and take the left five characters. There you have the zip code isolated. I'm going to copy those and paste as values and we have a zip code that we can use on our 3D map when we plot these sales. That was the simple example. Let's move on to a more complicated example. What makes this list of sales transactions more complicated is that now we've got multiple states involved, Connecticut, Texas, Arizona, a lot of different states and the zip codes, uh, some of them begin with the same digit, but many of them are starting with different digits. Now I told a little minor lie in the last segment because I said the only element that was common was the CO space eight. Well, there's actually another element that is common and it appears in these addresses and it's the United States. It's the country. There is a space, United Space States in every single address. So in this example, we're going to key off that commonality to pluck out the zip codes, but it's going to be kind of a two step process. First thing we're going to need is the length. I'll use the LEN function again, and that's a pretty simple task. Let's paste those all the way down. The second task is going to be to locate this United States within each cell. So I'm just going to call that location of United States. And how are we going to do that? We're going to use the search function again. We're going to find the text United. And by the way, this is not text uh, case sensitive. You could enter lowercase states and uh, that'll still work. And we're going to look within this text. So that's telling me that the U in United States is the 64th character over in that text string, just like before. 
I'm going to make a little room here. And we're ready for the next step. So much like uh, the other example, we're going to want to use the right function to chop off the zip code and everything to the right of the zip code. So let's start with that. The text is here and the number of characters is going to be the total length of characters minus the 64. So that'll get me knighted states. That should be what 76 minus 64 is 12. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep, that would get you the N I T E D states and nothing else. So in this case, we want to increase. We want the U, the space, and the five digits of zip code. So that's seven characters. I'm going to add seven back to that. And we've got a good solid zip code. I'm going to go ahead and copy those cells and paste as values to get rid of the formula. And now it's a fairly simple matter to chop off the left side with the left function. Got an extra E there. And we're going to paste those down. You'll notice there is a problem here. And the problem is that some of these zip codes, like this one, have the four-digit extension on them. Here's a couple more down here. So we're going to have to go back and do those over again. Let's paste these for the ones we have. We will copy those and paste as values. I'm going to ignore that error because I know it's caused by the dashes. And I'm going to sort these. Sort everything by column J. To move all those dash problems together. Okay, so let's get rid of the arrow or the error. So I pushed them all to the top. I've got six or seven of them here. Let's go back and work on those alone. I'm going to put a couple rows in here to keep these separate for now. We have to basically go back and do those over again. So to do that, I'm just going to clear out these cells. This, this won't take long at all. And we just want to modify our formula here for the right function. We want the right part of this. And the number of characters is going to be this minus this. Now we added seven before. On these, we're going to need to add an additional five characters. So seven plus five is 12. Let's see how that works out. And now we've got it. So now it's just a simple matter of copying pasting as values and that's let's use the left function to pull out the left five characters and we'll paste those as values as well now we've got the part of the zip code we want and we can put this all back together so we had to do a little two-step process. The four-digit extensions on those zip codes were there in the first example, but they weren't an issue because we just chopped them off when we did the final left function to keep the left five digits. But they were a factor in the second example because we started 
locating the U in the United States and working backward. And we, when we worked backward, we caught something we didn't expect. Now we've got a list of zip codes that we can plot on our map. Now in the first example, we had a state and the first digit of a zip code that we had in common. In the second one, we used the country that all of the addresses had in common. The question may arise then, what do you do if you have a set of unique addresses where there is nothing in common? Well, what I would resort to in that case is to try to add something, add the country to all of them, add something, and then start working from that common element to isolate what you need. If you've enjoyed the content of this video and found it informative, please consider hitting my subscribe button. I'll be doing at least one release of a new video every week on an Excel related topic on one of my playlists. You can expand your knowledge of Excel by simply checking in once a week to Spreadsheet Geek and I hope to see you. Thanks for visiting Spreadsheet Geek.